Taming of the Shrew, one of the most valuable books in the world. I picked it up in a little shop uptown. I tried to make a deal with them, but they wouldn't trade. This morning, they called me up and offered to sell. Look, Mary. James Waterlow and Sons. The bookmark of the maker. Why, what's the matter with Mary? A whole lot, Jim. This is your wedding anniversary, and you've forgotten all about it. So it is. I'm sorry. Oh, it's deeper than that, Jim. Mary's romantic, and you're so, oh, matter of fact. Well, she expects attention, and you just... Yes, don't... I know. I'm busy. matter. Why, nothing, Edith. Oh, yes, there is. And what's more, it's about Jim. I've known ever since I arrived on this visit something was wrong. And just because I'm Jim's cousin is no reason why you shouldn't tell me. You're right, Edith. It's Jim. He doesn't understand me. I've always despised women who talk about their private troubles, but somehow with you it's different. Of course it is, dear. Why, we've known each other for years. Why, you're like a sister to me. Jim's wonderful, just wonderful. But he doesn't understand. Five years, Edith. Five years I've stood it. Yes, dear, tell me. Romance is gone, and when you've lost that life, I'd just as soon be dead. Of course. But I'll be getting old soon. I'm not going to stand it. Jim and I have come to the end. I'm going away somewhere, anywhere. That'll be all, thank you, Simpkins. Nice little home you have here, Jim. Like it? How did you do it? Hard work. Mary will be delighted to see you. And surprised, too. She will be. <laughs> you know, there's only one thing about the weather. Everybody talks about it, but nobody does very much about it. <laughs> and Mary's going to be tickled to death to see you. Well, I hope so. You Look what I found down at the station, wandering around, trying to find its way to our house. Mary, darling, you look wonderful. I can't. I've been trying to get the old rhinoceros to visit us for the last five years. And here he is. Well, to tell you the truth, I thought I'd sneak in while the husband was away. You know, any hard-working man ought to be at the office at this hour. <laughs> You're a lot of help to a married man. <laughs> I... Oh, that is... We're awfully glad to see you. I was thinking of you only last night. Last night? On your wedding anniversary? Well, that is a compliment. Then you haven't forgotten. Forgotten? Look. Marigold. I tried my darndest to get here on time, but the train was simply hours late. Were you going out? Out? Why? Oh, oh no, no, not at all. Hey, Mage. Smoke? Thanks. Light? Mm-hmm. I hope it wakes. First time. Mm -hmm. Why, Mary, what's the matter? Why, uh, nothing. Oh, oh, that is, uh, that's some clothes for charity. Oh, now I know what happened to my other suit. 
And probably your newest one, too. My only one. <laughs> Here's the express one, Mary. Well, where's the trunk, miss? Oh, uh... Oh, Edith, you remember Major... How are you, Edith? How do you do, Major? Mary, what's the express man for? Oh, uh... Oh, he came to take Alma's trunk. You know she's leaving. Oh, I see. Wonderful. I'm awfully glad to see you again. I'm awfully happy to see you. I'll get in touch with you later. Uh, yes, but what about the trunk, miss? I'll get in touch Don't with I you later. Don't I get the trunk? What's the idea of... Oh, Pat, how about a little golf? Golf nothing. He hasn't told us his adventures yet. Now, you sit right down there and tell us about them. Well, it looks as though you were in for it. It certainly does. And did you get any shooting out there? Oh, yes, lots of it. Well, let's hear about it. No, I think it'll be a bit too gruesome. Oh, I think we can stand it. Well, don't make it too horrible. Oh, do tell us. It's adventure. It's the jungle. I can see it all now. The moon and everything. It really is pretty terrible, Mary. Well, life isn't worth that out there. I've shot half a dozen servants myself. The double-crossing beggars. Hooray! That's a great idea. Say, maybe that's the reason that Alma left. She heard that he was coming. Oh, Jim. <laughs> servants? <laughs> Probably all women. Look, their hearts first, no doubt. Eat it. Go on, Pat. Well, I don't think I had. It isn't pleasant, you know. And a man doesn't like his friends to know how callous and, well, brutal he's become. But that's life. Why did you kill them? It was a sort of a game we had, up until the government stopped us. A game? How dreadful. Yes, you see, the islands were literally infested with spies. Hmm. So we got up a game called I Spy and Pot Shot Them. I was a crack shot. I'm a pretty good shot myself. Oh, you. Go on. I shot a hole in one the other day. Go ahead, Pat. <laughs> life must be wonderful there. So, so sort of primeval life. The food is abominable. I bet I wouldn't mind. What did you eat? Oh, I'd better not tell you. Oh, you go wouldn't. on. It can't be so terrible. Well, you'd probably find it out sooner or later anyway. But I want you to all promise me that not one word of this will get out. Not a word. Snakes. Mm. No. Oh. You know, you'll eat anything if you get hungry enough. In fact, I got to like them. Oh, tremendously. There's a green variety out there. As a matter of fact, that's why I never married. I couldn't in justice to any woman. You know, after a woman gets to know your little personal habits, well, men do a lot of things. Up. We might feed him some frog legs. Yes. How would you like some? No, but if you could get me the whole frog, I can make... Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't mind her, Pat. I understand perfectly. I'll go, dear. Now you know the terrible person I am. Oh, you. Oh, it's disillusioning, I know. But perhaps for the best. Be charitable. That's all I can ask. I've sunk pretty low. Of course, there are a lot of things worse out there. But as I told you, it's lucky for you that you married Jim. I think you're wonderful. Oh, I don't care what you do. It's your heart. Your, for your... you, Pat. Oh, thanks. Listen to this. It's from Howard. As soon as you can get away decently from that old boy, Jim Huntley, huh. you must come up and visit with me. Stop. Half cabin and wilderness. Pretty crude and wild, but no, you won't mind that. Stop. I'm going to city. Wire my office and we'll go back together. Kiss Mary for me and tell her I still can't see why she threw me over for Jim. Regard signed Howard. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gift, isn't it, dear? Stop, Jim. You're hurting me. I'll drop Howard a line and say I'm coming. No, you don't. You don't get away from here for days. Or weeks, Mary. You exercise your feminine wiles on him. Make him stay. I have no persuasive powers. That's just it. I have to put temptation from me. <laughs> you use all you can, dear, to make him stay.
It's been just like old times, Pat. Only more wonderful. It has been a long time, hasn't it? Entirely too long. But at least your coming has had the virtue of strengthening my determination. And what are you determined to do? To leave Jim. But Mary, you're not serious. Perfectly serious. When you leave and are no longer our guest, I'm going away. Mary. I'm not going to keep up the pose any longer. Well, I hope I had no part in this breakup, despite what you said. About my determination? You've only strengthened it. Looking through your eyes, I realize how false my life is. It will break Jim's heart. And because of that, I'm to wreck my life. Mary. Oh, call me selfish if you want to. I suppose that's what the world would say I was. But for five years, I've thought of nothing but him. I've helped him. I've been a good wife in every way. I don't believe that way down in your heart, your love for Jim is dead. Oh, you don't? Well, maybe you're right. I don't want to be unfair. But I'll gamble that you're wrong. Mary, it's desperation. An emotion of the moment. Oh, you're just like every other man. You don't understand. But someday, somewhere, I'll meet someone who does understand. Oh, Mary, don't you understand? Oh, please, let's go. Hello, Pat. Have a good time? Jim, there's something I want to say to you. Shoot. Mary is in a very desperate mood. Huh. What, again? Or yet? Say, I... Look, I found one of the greatest things in here that you want to see. There's a... Why, what's the matter with you? I don't think you realize how serious this is. You know there's only one way to get anything into that thick head of yours, and that's right straight from the shoulder. Say, what are you talking about? I just had a talk with Mary. And do you realize that she's only staying on here for appearance sake? She's leaving you. Why, Pat? That's not so. Why, you're joking. Jim, I know it's hard for you to believe. You and I have been friends for years. Right. You know that I would do anything in the world for you. Oh, I know it. Well, it's the truth. And you've been blind to it all. What have I done? That's just it. You haven't done anything, except take her for granted. She's romantic. Where is she going? Any place. Just to get away. To lead her own life, as she calls it. Why, Pat, that can't be why. I love her. Sure, I know. But when I found out from Edith how things stood, I told her all those wild stories. Just to show her how well off she is with you. Why, Pat, I... Jim, I have a grand idea. I want your permission to elope with Mary. What? Oh, it's a great idea, and so different. Imagine the best friend asking permission of the husband to elope with his wife. Mary has an idea that the wilderness is full of romance. Why, she'd hate it. Why, she's the most luxury-loving girl I ever met. Yes, that's true. Now, I want to take her up to Howard's cabin. I'm sure a couple of days up there would cure her. I'd see that they would. Yes, but I don't see. After she's been there a couple of days, all the romance has faded. You come in with the big rescue party. I'll bet she'll fall in your arms and want to be forgiven. I have told her that I'm an entirely different person than she believes. A veritable tyrant. Now I'm going to prove it to her. Not a Petruchio taming Catherine, but a gentle tyrant. Yes, but I don't see where... Now listen. Something has got to be done to make re Mary realize her love for you. And in order to accomplish this, she must be disillusioned. Well, do you think... I know it can be done. I'll take her up there, and about the time she's thoroughly disgusted with her life and with me, we'll stage that bit of drama for her as I told you. Now, I want you to hire a couple of roughnecks and send them up to the cabin. I'll act frightened, and I'll run away and desert her. Then you arrive, loaded with pistols and with knives, and making the grand entrance, saying, So, you dirty dogs, 
You would attack a defenseless woman, would you? I'll guarantee Mary will fall on your neck. Good morning, Simpkins. Good morning, sir. Uh, Simpkins. Uh, this is going to be an elopement, and I uh, hope you will be discreet. I understand perfectly, sir. For you, Simpkins. Thank you, sir. Jim! What's the big idea? I thought you were going to meet us at the lodge. You old buzzard. I'm taking no chances. <laughs> so you're going to chaperone your wife's elopement? I wouldn't trust you any farther than I can throw a grand piano. <laughs> Where is she? She'll be right out. But won't she know you? Not a chance. <laughs> Nobody would know you. I'll go get her. <laughs> oh, Pat. He's not up yet. <clears throat> The new chauffeur. Can we trust him? Implicitly. Dressed for the great outdoors, eh? Why, yes. All right, let's go. Drive me to Rainbow Lodge, my man. Alone at last. Yes. You and I and uh, Simpkins. Oh, Simpkins doesn't count. Oh, yes, he does. How? Well, at least he gives me the use of both my arms. Well, why don't you use them then? Not yet, Mary. Wait until we get into the wilderness. I need the proper setting. Um, step on it, Simpkins. Adventure. Mile by mile, I seem to feel the fulfillment of a pent-up desire. Those big majestic trees seem to hold out their arms in welcome. Not majestic trees, Mary. Those are oak. Oh. Aren't you romantic? Well, a little in this arm, but not in this one. Oh, look at the dear little kitty. Kitty? Uh, step on it, uh, Simpkins. Anyhow, we're on the edge of a great adventure. Woo! Well, I'll say we are. There's a reservation nearby. Oh, isn't this divine? Oh, but we don't start here. This is just our hopping off place for the wilderness. Oh. Be you, Major Lovering? That's me. Well, the train you ordered is ready for you and your missus. Well, uh, uh, oh, of course. Uh, take Mrs. Lovering to the pack train. I'll be right with you, dear. This Mrs. Levering business is just about enough. Now listen, we came up here to cure her, didn't we? But you're going a little bit too far. Well, I'm not to blame. Now remember, she's after me. Well, you don't seem hard to get. <laughs> but where's the train? There. Train? Sure. Pack train. They're, they're hay burners. <laughs> 
Don't you see? Howard's cabin is only a half a mile from here. But by the time I've circled the lodge a dozen times, she'll think she's 20 miles from the nearest civilization. I get you. Now, after we're in the cabin, I'll leave her for a few minutes, and I'll meet you right here. Then we can arrange about the men. And I'll be waiting for you. Hurry, dear. She means me, uh, Simpkins. <laughs> Well, Joe, got plenty of grub aboard. We're going to take a long trip. How far are you going? Oh, about 20 miles before nightfall. We're going over the big divide. The missus is sure wearing some rig out for a trip like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'll get along all right. She's brought a great big powder puff with her. <laughs> you better get aboard, dear. Well, where's the wagon? The trails around these parts is too rough for wheels. You are going to ride with Sophie. <laughs> oh, another lady? <laughs> yes, Mom. Four legs and fur baron. <laughs> My goodness, where is she? Right there. An animated Morris chair. Well, how do I get Anna? Climb aboard, lady. The, the elevator ain't running. <laughs> Just a minute, Letty. I'll give you a hand. How do you steer this thing? Just pull the line in the direction you want to go and leave the rest to Sophie. You comfortable, Mary? Oh, uh, yes. The first 50 miles are the hardest. So long, Joe. So long. If Sophie bucks with you, just bite her on the ear. Don't worry about a little thing like that. You'll soon get used to it. I won't get on that beast again. All right, try walking. Oh, Pat! What? Oh, 
nothing. <laughs> oh, Pat! What is it? My shoes are killing me. Well, take them off then. Why, it gets much worse further on. I can't walk any further. All right. Get back on the burrow. Don't leave me. Come along, Mary. Oh, Pat, wait for me. I can't get through here. Oh, this is easy. Oh, oh, Pat, this is terrible. Duck a little. Look out for that big branch. Oh. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Goodness. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. Oh, Pat. Wait a minute, Pat. Oh, Pat. This... <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Pat. Don't go so fast. I'm all bruises. Oh, Pat! Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mary. I forgot to tell you to duck when you come to the low branches. Thanks. Oh, this is the wild, free, elemental life, isn't it, Mary? How far is the cabin? I'm sorry, but we're going to be there very soon. You're sorry? Ah, oh, Mary, these wild, majestic trees. Ah, oh, this ozone. These noble beasts. Oh, what is so fair as a day in June? Oh, what is so uh, as a day in June? Pat, what I'm is... hungry. A day? What is... Well, I've forgotten the rest of it anyhow. On to the food. Forward. On. Hey, up there. This fellow has been going around in circles for hours. I know it. Have an accident? No, thank you. I just had one.
Well, here we are. How do you like it? Oh, I'm just dead. Nonsense. Why, this is the life. Come on. Oh, I can't get off. Bite his ear. Here, I'll bite it. No. Oh. Oh, I'm all full of aches and pains. I've lost my shoes. Oh, I'll soon fix that. Come along. Behold, our paradise in the wilderness, free from all the conventionalities and comforts from which you fled. Thirty miles from the nearest outpost of civilization. Perhaps not as primitive as you would have liked, but the best I could do on short notice. Why, Mary, aren't you happy? I'm always happy with you, Pat, but my feet hurt. Oh, that's easy. Where are these? Don't you see? The whole thing is a frame-up. She wanted a change in the worst way. That's the way she's getting it. So that's what you've been doing to her. Sure. <laughs> well, I'll be slab-dabbed. <laughs> you can't do that. Say, who told you guys you were waiters? He, he did. did. Oh. You're both fired. I thought so. I wish we'd kept our jobs until we'd eaten. Well, I guess it's back to the pavements for us. I'm hungry. As usual. <laughs> I ain't heard the likes of it in years. Where do you <laughs> suppose I can get a couple of men for a job like that? There's 50 apiece in it for them. Pardon me, $50? Did I hear $50? Nothing else but. Here we are. We're your men. Can you boys act tough? Say, we are tough. And for $50, we can be ferocious. Well, you wait around until it gets dark, and I'll show you how to earn it. That's easy. We're a couple of waiters. Hey, in the meantime, we'd like to eat. Yeah. In the meantime, you do. I'll see you in the restaurant. Not the restaurant. The lunch counter. I can fix that, too. The stuff is out on the burrows. Oh, it's lovely. We have uh, hors d'oeuvre and jellied consomme, cold roast chicken. Oh. And we'll top it off with the... Uh, what? Secret. Vanilla ice cream. Oh, Pat, hurry. All right. are gone. We are lost. Oh, Pat. Thirty miles from the nearest human habitation. But wait. Perhaps we have one chance. Let me think. Let me think. Yes, Pat, think. This is an emergency. Emergency. That's it. Emergency rations. Maybe Howard left some. I'll look. Marvelous. What is it, Pat? Howard left his uke. 
Cheese in that. No, not even a mouse. Do my eyes deceive me? Beans. And pork. Here. Well, you're hungry, aren't you? Yes, sir. Why, I've lived for months on half as much as that. Now, there's the stove. Run along and cook them. Go ahead. Where do I turn on the gas? Gas? Turn on that wood pile and chop some wood. While I go out and stalk some big game before it gets dark. Don't go, Pat. Don't worry about me, Mary. I'll be all right. So there you are. Well, if it's not priceless old Simpkins. And in a new suit. Say, cut out the kidding. I've got everything fixed up with the two boys. How is it up at the cabin? Great. She's up there cooking dinner for me now. Some dried beans and a hunk of pork. Pork and beans. <laughs> and Mary's cooking it. And you've got to eat it. Not on your life. I eat right here. They're serving dinner now. Let's go. I'm famished. Oh, Bring my. me everything but the kitchen stove. Save that and warm it up for us. How about a nice big tenderloin, sir? Fine. Bring me two of them. Mine's the same, only make it a double order. <laughs> I'm starved. Absolutely. Oh boy, is that a steak? Is that a steak? <laughs> Beats those snakes and frogs you spoke about. 
say, did I have them kidded or not? You did. <laughs> but I think you were kidding on the level. Quiet, quiet, please. I'm too hungry. Well, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. Now, that's what I call a grand dinner. Great. Have a cigar? I'll never get one any cheaper. You know, Pat, I've been wondering. Maybe we're treating Mary a little bit too rough. Oh, don't tell me you're starting to weaken. We only brought her up here to cure her. You want some in your souvenirs? What? Souvenirs. I couldn't eat another thing. Here, wait a minute. <laughs> Here. You want it? No, beat it. Can't Say, use what's, that junk. what's the big idea? The grandest little idea we've had yet. You dress your two roughnecks up as Indians. Great! Do you think that'll scare her? Scare her? By the time I'm through telling her about Indians, she'll think it's Custer's last stand. <laughs> No homes have we, but our hearts are free, for we live in the open spaces. Though we have no wealth, we are rich in health, you can see by our sunburned faces. The only roof we know is our heaven overhead, and on this green earth we forest rangers. Make our bed Up in the mountains high Where the hawks and the eagles fly The echoes ring with the song we sing Under the big blue sky We have no four walls around us No darn fool rules to bound us And we have no And if we have wives, they've never found us. Mm -hmm. Up mm -hmm. in the mountains high, under the big blue sky. Hi, Bill. Hello, Hello Joe. Hello. Hi, boy. Hi. Hey, Crazy Crow and Fuzzy Feathers escaped from the reservation today. Any of you boys seen anything of them? No, we haven't seen them around here, Jake. But if those two get any fire water under their belt, it'll be just too bad. With or without, those two are bad Indians. Well, we'll keep an eye open for them all right, Jake. Don't worry. Well, well. Dinner ready and waiting. Ah. You know, Mary, I couldn't even find a gopher. Thank goodness we have the beans. Do I smell something burning? Why, uh, no. Funny. Pat, are you sure you like beans? Oh, I love them. And am I hungry? Ooh. Ah, this is going to be good. What on earth did you ever do to them? I can't eat that junk. How are we going to live in the big outdoors if you can't cook? Well, I didn't come up here to be your cook. Nevertheless, I'm hungry. Oh, you are? Well, come here. There's your favorite food. Eat these. 
What? Well, you said you liked them. Well, I... I do, but, uh, uh, these are a trifle underage. Too bad. Ooh. You can't see it from here, but the cabin is over there behind those trees. Well, what do we have to do? Just like I told you. You listen for this. Then you pass up and down in front of the window two or three times, hooping it up. <laughs> then you go inside. Don't treat her too rough, but give her a good scare. My friend will come out. I'll go in and rescue her. Oh. You ain't gonna rescue her too hard, are you, boss? I thought you said you boys were tough. Say, we are tough. Honest, we are. Come on, we show them. We could be much worse off. We couldn't be. Oh, yes, we could. Suppose we were to be attacked by Indians. Indian? Mm-hmm. Every now and then they escape from the reservation and go on the warpath. If they were to find us here, I wouldn't give a penny for our scalps. Oh, Pat, do you think Certainly. I... This is the time of the year when they make whoopee. Oh. Be Indianish. And these Indians have never forgiven the white man for subdividing their land. Boy, your acts are real. You got me scared. Oh, I know all about Indians. My old man was from Indiana. We are surrounded. Oh, Pat. Well, what if we met some real Indians? Say, don't worry about that, boy. All you got to do is make a piece. Raise your right hand and say, soak em. Soak em? Soak em. They're scabbing on this job. Say, what's the big idea? We're getting paid for this. Hey, ma, hickory, hand the job. What'd he say? Get in it, Gendo, Gendo. We weren't talking to you. They're real. Yeah. Uh, uh. What's the word? Hold up your right hand. No, no, the word. Soak them. Soak them. 
Wrong pronunciation. So come. <laughs> Wrong word. Wrong tribe. Pat, do you think they've gone? I doubt it. Ow! Well, what do you want? Go and eat. Squaw catching food. Crazy crow catcher squaw. Oh! Looks bad, Mary. Good work, boys. Keep it up. Now, see here, you two. You can't come in here like that. I won't have it. Come on. Not so rough, not so rough. Oh! Pat, Pat, save me. I can't, Mary. That's too much for me. Don't be a coward, Pat. Soak him. Put oh. now. I think we should get out of here. You think? How did it go? Great. The stage is all set. You just go in and do your hero stuff. And believe me, those two birds of yours are plenty tough. You're just out of condition. Wait. They'll be a cinch for me. There must be an easier way than this to earn a living. We'll talk that over later. Come on. What's this coming? Hey, 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 run for your lives. What's the matter? Indians, 200 of them. 2,000 of them. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many? Well, two of them. Oh. Both of them. Say, and, and they're on the warpath. They tried to scalp us. They must have run into Crazy Crow and Fuzzy Feathers. Say, we run into a whole Indian revolution. Redskins. I'll teach you to strike a defenseless woman. I'll make you bite the dust. Him loco. Jim, be careful. Fear not. I came up here to rescue you. Stand back. Outside, bums. Wait up. Wait up. Quiet. Yeah. Oh, no! Oh. 
No, dear, I'm all right. I would never have believed it of you. Neither would I. There they are. What happened? Jim did it. Get them up, boys. Take Indians back to reservation. White men heap tough. Get them out of here. Are they real? Real? They're the two toughest Indians on the reservation. Do you know this man? I found him circling around here. I knew him, and he can keep on circling. That's a great piece of work. Those two were bad eggs. Don't mention it. Good night. Good night. Jim, I think you're simply wonderful. No, dear. Wonderfully simple. <clears throat> uh, sir, bar is waiting. Very good, Simpkins. <laughs> 